Hello, it's Doug from Behind Closed Doors and today I'm going to be looking at a video called Modern Dating Ruined, 7 Infuriating Double Standards Men Deal With and the video is by Real Men, Real Style. Let's get into the video. So when a woman says she wants a man that makes six figures, is six foot tall and has social, everyone says, go get it girl, you get what you want queen. But when a man says he wants a woman that cooks, cleans and is healthy, he's labeled sexist. In today's video gents, we're talking about the double standards that us guys have to deal with. Yeah, it's very interesting isn't it? I think the whole society is set up to appease women and to promote women's feelings and to demonize men for feeling the way that they naturally feel. I think that in a lot of ways, I think capitalism works on pleasing a woman um, because the main spending power and what most adverts are aimed at are at housewives because they have their own money, they have the husband's money, they have any money from the government, they have children's money. So advertisers try and pander to them in order to get their business. And when it comes to political matters, women tend to change their mind a lot, whereas male voters tend to stick to one party and they very rarely change. So whether it's consumerism uh, or politics, both are trying to get the female vote, so to speak, or the female dollar, you know. Also, I don't think it's just socially constructed. I think it's something much deeper inside of human beings and primates in general that wish to appease women and create this double standard whereby we value females more than we value males. And that may have something to do with the fact that females produce a finite amount of eggs. When a baby girl is born, she has all the eggs that she's gonna have for the rest of her life. Whereas men, when they have sperm, they can just keep producing it. So sperm is in abundance and eggs are scarce. So biologically, because we're designed to survive and reproduce. It's a lot of said, isn't it? We're only 17 seconds into this video, but I think that covers a lot of why there are double standards. And again, I don't, I think they, they, it, the social constructionism doesn't help, but I think there's biological factors for that as well. Now the points I'm going to be revealing today were pulled out of our community tab here at Real Men Real Style. Seriously, gents, if you haven't checked out the community tab here at Real Men Real Style, you're missing out. In the community tab, you can get in there, leave comments, vote, interact with us, and we love hearing from you guys. Now with that first comment, Tony Sosa had a point, but I like what P. The Smith had to say. They're calling you sexist because what you should have said is you're looking for a woman who is nurturing wise, resourceful, and who would be a good mother. I have to agree, P. The Smith has a good point. The way that you word things is key to the way that people understand them and the way that they hear them. And I really liked his wording a lot more. So if you're looking for a partner, I would probably choose to use his words. Now we had a couple guys jump in and immediately say, you know, women nowadays, they're all too selfish. Had another guy say that women think they should be able to be fat and disgusting and sit around the house and be able to get a high quality man. Gents, I want to nip this in the bud. If you think that making big generalizations like that and trying to categorize half the population as being this or that is going to solve your problem, you... Yeah, I think what happened was the feminist movement came along in order to break up the family home and to be able to tax housewives because they couldn't tax housewives. So they needed to get them out into the workplace and they wanted to get this children early on in school um, and they wanted to pit men and women against each other because pr breaking up the family is profitable for the economy and because of all the feminist movement which was heavily funded there's been a rebellious kind of movement from the the men's rights activists or the the red pill community or whatever the pickup artists that's all a kind of reactionary force to the feminist movement so there's all this hostility and then there's a backlash of all this hostility back and it's just a really sad thing that's happened i think a very sad and unnecessary thing that's happened and i can understand men's perspective and i can understand women's perspective and i can understand the red pill and the blue pill and all the other different types of pills but really, at the end of the day, it's based on human behavior. You've got to treat people based on how they individually treat you, as opposed to how you believe a group acts in general. And I think this is kind of what he's saying. It kind of, you don't want to allow your perceptions to be distorted by generalizations. However, at the same time, you still need to make generalizations. 
and the reason why you need to make generalizations is because just as human beings we're designed to recognize patterns and so I think it's very important to be able to be aware of the danger but move forward in spite of it and I think it's important to hope for the best and plan for the worst don't put yourself in a compromising position whether you're a man or a woman both sexes all human beings can be dangerous and uh, you need to protect yourself at every single step of the way look after yourself protect yourself and and um and your safety is the most important thing and that's why trust is so important in a relationship because in the same way that a woman doesn't want to get sexually assaulted a man doesn't want to be taken to divorce court and have all his stuff taken away and not be able to see his children for years so you really do need to protect yourself no matter who you are as a man married to a woman who i consider to be one of the most selfless people i've ever met her mother actually giving her a run for her money the point being is you can't make broad generalizations like that yes there are some very selfish women but as a man raising three daughters who i see the way they take care of each other the way they look out for each other and their brother and their family this is something that i find insulting and really i think is an well i don't think you should be insulted by it because it's really got nothing to do with you like people's opinions are only that it's their map of the world it's not the territory necessarily so you know if you're a bit offended by it don't worry about it mate it'll be all right impediment to you being able to find happiness i think the point i want to make with this comment is it's great if you've got standards and it's even better if you can express those standards without offending a lot of people as you're out there looking for a partner but just because you've ran into some people well i'm not really too concerned about offending people because even if you go out and you're the nicest guy in the world someone can still choose to be offended you can't really control how other people think and feel um, all you can do is just say what you believe to be true go out into the world and get, put your best foot forward and you know let people think what they like who perhaps have not treated you fairly or you've perceived to be selfish be careful about generalizing a huge part of the population as all being like that i think we're all selfish and we're all self-centered um, but i think it's um mutual selfishness there was a book called the selfish gene by richard dawkins kind of goes into this but it's not so much again i don't like the word selfish i do prefer self-centered and you've got to take care of yourself i prefer that that's a much better way of saying it to take care of yourself and to take care of yourself you need to make sure you've got water food housing um, love uh, family friends well, like health wealth and relationships and have good quality connections with people. So yeah, um, I, I don't think it's so much selfish, it's um, just taking care of yourself. And speaking of double standards, let's talk about initiating fun in the bedroom. Come on guys, it always seems like it's on us, right? But what happens when you can't get it up? Yeah, we're talking about ED erectile dysfunction. Well, I don't know that it always seems that it's on us. I mean, I think women have um, more sexual interest than men do. I mean, women can have multiple orgasms, men can't. They kind of have one and they're done. You know, then they've got to wait around for a bit for another one. Women are very sexually active. Um, probably, uh, you know, they're designed to be. The, the fate of the human race depends on women being sexual creatures. I, I, so I don't think it is all on us, no. About ED erectile dysfunction. Gents, whether you've been in a relationship for years or you're excited just to get out there and start dating and engaging with people again, when the time comes, you want to be ready. When I say ready, I mean Roman ready. Now guys, Roman is a sponsor of today's video and I've talked about this company. For right, okay, so we're slipping the sponsor in here. Um, I, yeah, I, I wonder what erectile dysfunction had to do with the video. Yeah, I mean, with erectile dysfunction, um, if we're going to be talking about that now, and I'm supposed to be reacting to it, usually the reason why men have erectile dysfunction is because there are blood vessels going into the penis, and that makes it erect through the blood flowing through. And when the, the blood struggles to flow through, the penis doesn't become as erect. So if you are experiencing erectile dysfunction, it may be a result of poor vascular health. Um, so like the smallest blood vessels are in the penis and in the nose and in the eyes. So um, you'll, you'll have trouble with your eyesight and your nose and your penis if you're having really bad erect, if you're having really bad vascular problems. So the best thing to do for that is to have um, more nitric oxide um, going through your blood vessels to help clear the blood vessels out. And they can be found in like fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. Uh, vitamin C and garlic is good. Um, you know, and other foods like um, beetroots and uh, 
uh, rocket lettuce and there's, there's loads of foods have a look online at foods high in nitric oxide so that's from a physiological perspective from a psychological perspective i think that the reason why a lot of men get erectile dysfunction is because they just don't feel safe in a relationship you know because of all the reasons that the men have listed and i think you need good psychological well-being we're not just like robots that turn on and off um, you know, men are the same as women. We're all human beings. We all need to have a certain amount of safety in order to be able to relax, to be able to get a hard on. So it's very important to sleep with people that you trust. And if you have a, a negative view of women, then you're going to find it more difficult to be able to relax and let go and trust someone. Um, so yeah, there's two reasons as to why men get erectile dysfunction as we're talking about that in the video. The next double standard when it comes to dating. For men, it's like a job interview. For women, it's like choosing food off of a menu. Well, I disagree with this completely. It's the opposite way around. When I go on a date with a girl, I'm asking her a series of questions in a particular order. Even before I go out on a date with her, even if I'm just messaging her online, and I do have a course where I tell you exactly what to message and how to message to get online dating success. See the link in the description below. And I, I qualify people and I make sure that they're worthy of my time. So no, I, I, I think it's the opposite way around. I'm making sure they're good enough to be with me. Food off of a menu. Now, I really like this one, but let's change it around and look at it from the other side. So if dating for guys is like a job interview, one of the best things about that is you get to choose which job you're going to apply for right when you go into a restaurant no, she's applying for a job at your company you're the boss you're not applying for a job at her company you're the one that's got to be the man you're the one that has the balls you're really in the relationship that's that when you go into a restaurant most of the time you actually do not get to choose what is on the menu you are presented the menu and you've got to choose from the selection so let's no it's more of a case of you're the ceo of a company and you're hiring someone to look after your company and you've got to make sure that you're um, interviewing the right people with the right qualifications with the right attitude uh, that then they turn up to the job on time like you know you're in charge that's it from the selection so let's put ourselves in the you know the chair of the woman all of a sudden you've got all of these men approaching you these suitors and you have to choose from the suitors but the one you want he's over there and this brings up another double standard actually on the women's side that was brought up is that women talk about hey if i go after a guy i'm looked at as being too forward and by the way gents i would love to hear from you down in the comments what do you think about when a woman does approach a man have any of you guys ever been asked out i've had it happen to me a couple times and i have to admit i didn't follow up i thought it was a little but aggressive no when women have, have approached me i've never found it to be aggressive they do it in a very indiscreet way they very rarely come up and are very overtly in your face and forward like men are they're much more subtle and they'll come over and they'll dance near you and rub up against you and they'll like come over and just ask a question about absolutely nothing just so that they can talk to you and they just kind of stare in your eyes give you the bambi eyes anime eyes and all that kind of stuff so it's sort of like they do it in a much more subtle way than men. You know, and I looked at them, it just really wasn't my type, but I would love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts? What's your opinion? Let me hear from you down below. Yeah, I've had it loads of times and I don't blame them and I invite them to. Yeah, why not? I mean, I can just stand at a bar and women will approach me. It's easy. Your opinion let me hear from you down below i think the point on this one is that dating in general to most guys it seems harder for us because we're getting these questions we're having to measure up but there are ways to flip this and a lot of well, if you're getting the questions you don't have to answer them like if a girl asks me what i do on a dating app i just don't respond to her i tell her to take care and to look for someone else because i'm not selling myself as a provider i'm selling myself as a lover and so I don't need to explain to her what I do. I don't, I'm not looking for a girl that's interested in what I do. I'm interested in a girl that's interested in who I am. So I just ignore the people that are interested in what I do and what I have. And I, I pay attention and I pursue the ones that are interested in who I am as a person. If you guys know this, hey, actually play the field. Look at other options. All of a sudden you become the one that's being sought after. Yes. Yeah. Until you're dating multiple girls and you've got loads of girls, it's essentially a sales funnel. Until you've got bloody ice cream van. <sighs> he comes around every day, this bloody ice cream van. Hang on, it's just got to wait because it'll go. Dun, 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 dun. 
And you know what? I've gone out and I, I once managed to get an ice cream. The other times he just shoots off by the time I get to go to see him. Anyway, where was I? We're having to measure up, but there are ways to flip this. And a lot of you guys know this. Hey, actually play the field. Look at other options. Yeah, when you live in abundance of dating women, you won't have oneitis and all the other problems that men suffer from. You engage with her, you got it started, but you know, she's got to measure up to your standards. Notice how we keep coming back to standards. And I think this is key. So many guys, and they've shown this in, there was a whole study on speed dating in which guys had standards. They had a checklist of what they were looking for. And all that went out the window as soon as they see a pretty face. And that is a very hard thing as a guy not to do because you're like, oh, well, I've got a pretty good chance. I'm going to go with this. And most of us will, including me many times. Point being though, is you've got to set what's important. Yeah, you've got to make a decision. You've got to be like, okay, yeah, she's beautiful. I'll have sex with her. Now completely forget about that and concentrate on the behavior and see if she's a nice person or not. That's what you've got to do. But men don't. They kind of get stuck on sort of like, oh, she's so pretty. She's so pretty. With this, and most of us will, including me many times. Point being though, is you've got to set what's important for you. Make sure to write this down. Make sure to put it out there so you know truly what you're looking for. Yes, you may go off path, you know, one night or maybe a few nights, but hopefully you can get right back to it because if starting a family, if actually finding someone that is financially fit, if those things are important to you, you want to make sure early on in the process that that's important to her. Next up we got. Yeah, but whether you're having like a, looking for a long-term partner or a one night stay, and the principle is still the same. You've got to be honest about what you want and connect with your instincts and not worry about what she wants or what she looks like. Vic chiming in and he's saying that women say that they want to be equal. Then I say, how about you pay for dinner or at least split the bill? You hear that? Nothing but crickets. Now, again, this comment can easily fall into the trap of generalizations because we had another gentleman, Ethan, jump right in and he said that every single woman he's gone out with has happily split the bill with him. And Magtau PL points out that this is the norm over in Germany and from what I hear in many parts of Europe. Now, if I'm inviting you out for a drink, I'm paying, that's it. If you want to pay for the second drink and that would make you happy, you're more than welcome to. But if I'm inviting you out for a drink or a meal or whatever it is, I'm paying because I invited you out. Whether you're a client, whether you're a girl I'm pursuing, I'm asking for your time and attention and company. So I'm gonna pay for it. If I didn't want it, I wouldn't ask for it and I wouldn't pay for it. Of Europe. Now, a lot of guys jumped in and said, the problem is that women want it both ways. They wanna be equal when it's convenient and they want men to be men, AKA to step up and do things for them when it's convenient. Again, you can't really listen to what women say that they want. And all this equality thing is mostly like the bullshit from the feminists. They don't really want that. And I see what these guys are saying. There are women out there that will take advantage of men. That being said, and I'm gonna sound like a broken record saying this, have your standards and stick to them. And that's one of the hardest things because you want to bend it because she's absolutely beautiful. Just this one time, right? No, it's much. Yeah, no, I agree with him absolutely 100%. The standards I have are honesty, trust, and respect. And here's a really good question for you. If you're a young single guy and you're looking to get laid, what happens if you got her pregnant? Would you be happy to have a baby with her? Now, whether you have a one night stand or a long term relationship, you can very easily get somebody pregnant, even if you take precautions, it happens. So you've got to look at the bigger picture. Easier to stick with your stands 100% of the time than stick with them 99% of the time. Once you bend, all of a sudden she knows you're going to bend. But if you have your standards, hey, we always split the bill. I always expect you to pull your own weight. You're a partner and that's what I'm looking for. doesn't matter how beautiful you are, how much, you know, I like, you know, we like our nights together. You've just got your standards. If you hold that. Yeah, no, I don't really agree with splitting the bill 50-50 and all that crap, but every man to his own. Again, all my friends that I talk to about dating, which are quite a few, because I get the, I want to get firsthand information, but they all say the guys that have their standards are the ones that seem to have the best luck. No, because if women are saying equality and you provide equality, it's sort of like who's leading the relationship? She's specifying what she wants and you're trying to appease it. Sort of like, fuck equality. I don't want equality. To have the best luck finding the right type of women. Now, gents, if you think that double standards exist for men, do me a favor and smash that like button. Seriously, by engaging with these videos, letting the YouTube algorithm know that you like these videos. Look, the thing is men and women are different and they're always gonna be different and difference isn't a problem and you don't have to be equal. It's not a problem. As a man, you stand up to pee when you go to the toilet. A woman sits down to pee. So now should I sit down to pee just to make sure it's equal? Should she stand up and piss all down her leg just to make it equal? No, it's rubbish. 
people are allowed to be different and difference is a good thing, it's not a bad thing. And it, inequality doesn't necessarily have to be eradicated. More men will find it. Plus, I appreciate it. Now, the next double standard brought up is that women have all the bargaining power in the negotiation as they have a lot of demand pretenders, while men are the ones who have to face all the risks and always offer more to achieve expectations. Now, pertaining to this. No, I don't agree with that. I can see why men would think that, but that's because they're disrespecting themselves and they're allowing to settle for less. And they're also lying to themselves. There's so much social conditioning to kind of like flip around on its head. Now, pertaining to this point, I totally disagree with this comment. I think the guy is approaching it wrong and here's why. So whenever you show up to a negotiation, even if you feel you don't have as strong of a position, you do have power. Why? Because you can always walk away. My question is, what's your BATNA? Now, BATNA stands for best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Basically, this is your bottom price. This in the negotiation is, that's the minimum that you're going to stand for. These are your standards, what they must meet for the negotiation to go forward. And yeah, I have honesty, trust and respect. So um, the moment that a girl is dishonest, the moment that she disrespects me, I won't talk to her ever again. It's not a problem. The whole ability of you to be able to have a negotiation is that that person wants something from the relationship. You want something from the relationship and hopefully there is an overlap. If there is no overlap, guess what guys? This is a relationship you probably should not, not probably, you should not engage in. Seriously, negotiation imbalances only happen by people that don't know how to negotiate. Believe me, that's probably most people out there. So if you understand, again, you set your standards, you know. Especially women because they're higher in agreeableness, which makes it very difficult for them to be disagreeable, which is why they do less well in like as entrepreneurs and in, in industry. And again, you set your standards. You know what you want to get out of life. You know what you're looking for in a partner. Simply hold that standard to be true when you're engaging with this person, when you're measuring them up and you're going to find, unfortunately, most people probably are not going to meet that standard and you'll need to move on. When a woman says, I won't date a guy who's under five foot eight, fair enough. People have their standards. When it ah, shit. I'm just five foot seven. Fuck. One inch. One fucking inch. <laughs> Fucker. There's billions of other girls out there. I'll go out and date Nicole Kidman instead. She likes shorter guys. Whatever you say, I won't date a woman that weighs over 130 pounds, you are labeled a misogynist. Now, I can see how this point really riles people up. It's similar to our first one. But what's interesting about this is most guys, I mean, you can't do anything about your height. But when it comes to your weight, well, that's within your control. So what do you guys think? Agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments. Now, there was a great comment added by Praise the Sun. And he said, you act like women don't get for that. But here you are giving women for that. And I have to agree, if a woman publicly says that she's not going to date a short guy, then yeah, I think she'd get a little bit of ridicule. But here's where it happens that you really can't do anything about it. And that is in. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, like people do do things about their height. Do do. <laughs> um, yeah, women wear high heels. I think small actors are known for kind of wearing platforms. So there are ways you can do, but does it really matter? Why don't you just own who you are and what you are and just present your best self? I've always been attracted to women my height and taller. So I've always dated women that have been taller than me and it hasn't been an issue for me. Might have been an issue for them. Might have been one of the reasons why we split up, but I don't care. Here's where it happens that you really can't do anything about it. And that is in the dating apps. Let's just face it. A lot of them people are going through and they're pre-selecting what they're looking for. And guys in many ways are doing the same thing. Though not to the extent of women, but that's really because we don't have as many options usually coming our way. But if you're having trouble, if you are a shorter guy, then get off the dating apps and find other ways to meet people. Next, we have the comment, forced to treat her like royalty while she is free to treat others however she wants. I'm not sure if this one was just trolling the feed, but to be honest, that just sounds like a and you need to get out of that relationship. Now, this one made me crack a smile, and that is Larry. He said that a woman will never say, I can't afford to go on a date. Now, this one seems to be insinuating even beyond food. If you're gonna go do something together, you're gonna see a live event, it's expected a lot of times that the guy pays for it. I do think if you ask somebody out, and I'm a little bit old fashioned, I would still think to pay for a date, but I haven't been dating for a while. Again, I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. Do you think that you should pay for the first date? I want to hear. Well, it depends. If she's invited me out, she can pay for it. And if I invite her out, I'll pay for it. 
Simple as. A first date. I want to hear from you guys down below. Now, in that community post, there was actually some really great advice. Blue Note said, as a woman, I don't understand why guys even date women with height requirements for their partner. That would be a deal breaker for me. Just like a guy who expects... Absolutely, I agree with that 100%. ...a certain boob size from a woman. I guess that's important if all you want is a hookup, but if you're looking for a partner for life, stay away from women who have such requirements. Yes, women usually call the shots, but that's only because men are willing to put up with that, aka simp. Know your worth. I also Absolutely. That's going back to what I said earlier about self-respect. And I think a lot of the things, a lot of the time, is that men just lack self-respect. That's all it is. Or they have it, but then when a beautiful girl comes by, it kind of like hypnotizes them and they go, Duh! and then they just lose all self-respect for themselves like dickheads. I also like what Big B Views had to say. Absolutely, without a doubt, there are double standards from things like height to job and everything in between. Most often, someone is expecting the other to meet many criteria. And I don't like this whole idea of double standards. It's just that we're different. There's not a double standard because there's not a standard. Everyone is unique and special. And I, I, I don't want to sound like, you know, they're a special snowflake, but we are, we're all special, we're all unique, we're all individuals, and we all have something to offer. And to compare ourselves to a set standard that all men, all women, all human beings have got to live by, it's bullshit. The only standard you need to compare yourself to is behavioural, honesty, trust and respect. If someone's honest and respectful, you can trust them. The only measure you need for standard is trust. Do I trust this person and do they trust me? That's all you need to do to even be considered worthy of a date. But trying to apply that criteria in the other direction rarely is met with the same expectations. And Goldie had this nugget. There are double standards because people accept double standards. No one is obligated to date you. If you are someone who does not have attributes that transcend the double standard, you either have to convince the judge to stop the double standard or make personal changes to nullify the double standard. Complaining about the double standard is a waste of time. Now, go Again, I don't like this word double standard and it's been used way too many times in this explanation. There is no standard. Fuck the standard of time. Now, Goldie, that may be true, but it sure makes for a fun video. So what video to watch next? How about innocent things that guys do that women, for some reason, find disgusting? What am I talking about? Gents, click on this video to find out. Well, to be honest, I've enjoyed watching that one. So um, I like the energy of it. I like this guy. He's very forward, very bum, bum, bum. Um, got a lot of nice style about him. Um, he obviously puts a lot more effort into his videos than I do. Um, yeah, very good, entertaining, thought-provoking, and also interactive video because he's got a lot of the comments back and he's feeding back to people. So I think this is probably one of the best videos I've seen, actually, on my channel so far. And I've probably watched about 60, 65 videos or something like that. So yeah, well done you, mate. Very good video. Excellent.